Carrier Ethernet has become the transport technology of choice in the wide area network. It's replacing legacy TDM technology for two fundamental reasons. First, the capex to transport the same amount of data is dramatically lower. Second, it, it's much more flexible. For example, allowing a smooth range of bit rates, different classes of service, multiple protection options, and, and of course multi-point services. For these reasons, Carrier Ethernet is the clear leader in next generation telecom infrastructure. It's the transport technology in 4G mobile backhaul networks, in data center exchanges, and for high-speed access services between enterprises and the cloud. In the TDM world, a DS1 is a DS1 is a DS1, and an E1 is an E1 is an E1. They're completely standardized, regardless of which operator is providing these services. By contrast, as I said earlier, Ethernet's much more flexible. But with this flexibility comes complexity. Each access vendor has its own unique Ethernet service definition. This definition specifies different parameters and options, such as committed information rate, protection mechanism, topology, transparency, etc. The variability in these Ethernet service definitions impacts virtually every operational support system and process in the network. It has an impact on inventory accuracy since there's so many more parameters associated with each service. It has an impact on performance of monitoring, being able to easily sectionalize faults and understand what's impacting a circuit. It very frequently re results in circuit fallout during first time turnup, where the network elements haven't necessarily been provisioned correctly. We've seen a number of operators where uh, on the order of only 20% only of the first time circuit turnups are successful. And finally, on intercarrier ordering of Ethernet circuits, when you're trying to align the service definitions between 40 different access vendors, all of which have different parameters and different handoffs, can add huge complexity and time to the, uh, the, the turn-up intervals. Most operators today rely on third-party access vendors to provide Ethernet access services where they can't reach the locations they need to serve. These are called off-net circuits. The extent to which an operator relies on off-net is dependent on many different factors, but they're becoming increasingly important. Off-net circuits literally fill a service gap, but they're also a blind spot that results in many operational issues. For example, off-net circuits can represent a massive recurring cost for which service providers have little to no visibility of performance and, and inventory. And this means they need authoritative means of pursuing SLA claims or loss penalties. The ordering between providers means lengthy manual processes and often on the order of 100 days to turn up a, an, an Ethernet access circuit. The inventory data from access vendors is, is limiting to the ordering process details, so it's often nearly impossible to get an accurate view of your, your, your Ethernet asset inventory. You really don't know what you have. And finally, you get cost leakage. As service providers transition from TDM to Ethernet, they're often challenged to assure that the services uh, turn down and turn up is accurately reflected in monthly access provider billing to them. Are they really getting what they're being charged for? The bottom line is that intercarrier services are, are here to stay and growing, and, and you need to architect your operational support systems to deal with them. And this is where intercarrier service orchestration comes in. Intercarrier service orchestration encompasses four key capabilities. The, the first is around data integrity assurance. We know that inventory inaccuracy is a huge problem in Ethernet transport. This is where a, a continuous audit process is required to mine the various inventory sources and create a single authoritative source of asset inventory across all of your different access vendors. Next is around automated service provisioning, including automated ordering between the service providers and access vendors and automated provisioning of the network elements themselves right through turn-up test. The third part of service orchestration is dynamic off-net service monitoring. You need to be able to accurately sectionalize faults between you and your access vendor. You also need extensive performance monitoring to determine if the access vendor is meeting their service level agreements. Finally, intercarrier service orchestration needs to provide end-to-end -end visualization 
of the status of all of the Ethernet transport services, including both the on-net and the off-net portion provided by the third parties. Intercarrier services continue to grow as our world becomes more and more connected, and, and more and more of the services are provided by third-party cloud service providers. Scenix is unique in providing service orchestration software for intercarrier Ethernet transport services. We leverage big data analytics to correlate the extensive data being generated by OSS tools and other sources to create a single trusted source. We audit on a continuous basis all of this data in a completely automated way so that the data is always checked and is never out of sync. We create an, a new generation service information model that sits on top of today's OSS tools, which is completely complementary and non-intrusive. And, and we have a basic philosophy that we call automate, automate, automate. We make use of the latest software technology to minimize human activity associated with processes such as intercarrier ordering and service turnup.